Hey there, Professor Fields back with another lesson on criminal investigations. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the difference between proactive and reactive investigations. Most investigations are reactive. In other words, the crime has already occurred and we're reacting to it. This usually starts with the step one of discovery of the crime and the police response. In the majority of cases, the victim contacts the police and the patrol officers dispatch the crime scene. In some serious cases, such as homicides, detectives will make it uh, dispatched right away. Once on scene, the second step occurs, a preliminary investigation. That is based on the complexity of the investigation, such as a traffic violation. Investigation might be smaller than a, uh, a homicide sign scene. Then there's the follow-up investigation, and that's usually depending on the solvability factors, whether or not there's evidence that can be helped to solve or whether or not the crook is in custody at the time. Next up are the proactive investigations. In other words, the times we're out there trying to catch the criminals before they commit crimes or to entice them to do a crime. Those often involve undercover or covert operations, and it usually involves the police initiating the investigative process. This has become effective in combating certain crimes such as prostitution and drug dealings. Some strategies include stings, decoys, undercover fencing operations, stakeouts, and surveillance. We'll discuss that all in a later chapter. In a decoy operation, an undercover officer often attempts to attract a criminal by presenting an opportunity for the offender to commit a crime. An example would be an undercover officer posing as a prostitute in order to catch the Johns. One concern you have in undercover investigations is entrapment, and we'll discuss entrapment in depth in another section. Now back to the lesson. 